This is the entrance to the Great Pyramid. It was hidden for thousands of years. It was discovered by the ancient Egyptians and found to lead to a long descending passage that ended in a subterranean chamber with an underground well of uncertain depth. Now, today, over a million tourists have seen this, this subterranean chamber. And this was all that was known for thousands of years until the Caliph of Baghdad named Al-Mamon in the year 820 discovered that there was a cleverly disguised ceiling block that led to a whole different series of chambers. This is when the Ascendant Passage was discovered. Queen's Chamber, King's Chamber, Grand Gallery and Antechamber. But is this the only entrance into the pyramid? Is there another portal that has been cleverly hidden? The answer is yes. In my Great Pyramid videos, I have revealed data showing that the monument is a technolithic artifact. It's, ba it's, it's, it's vapor canopy engineering is what it is. It encodes the past, the present, and the future in a unit of measurement found on the granite leaf boss of the antechamber that over 140 years ago, researchers had termed the pyramid inch. It is a standard unit of measurement that the pyramid reference is self-referencing. The Great Pyramid actually gives you the unit of measurement by which you need to study it. So, this self-referencing feature I have shown in many of my presentations showing you different dates in world history that comport with the rectilinear measurements of the Great Pyramid. This self-referencing also applies to the Great Pyramid shows us the exact date that it was completed. Construction, that was 2815 B.C., the year 1080 Annus Mundi. So, it was before the Flood. The Giza complex was lowered into the Mediterranean by an earthquake in subsidence when the vapor canopy collapsed, where it remained for 340 years half submerged below the Mediterranean. And then another earthquake in 1899 BC basically created upheaval and the North African plate was restored to its original position. The drainage ca caused ba ba what you know of as the Delta of the Nile River. Go, that, that it's, in anciently it was called the Nine Bows region. It was Goshen, where the ancient Israelites were. The Egyptians found the monuments half buried in sand, and the Sphinx suffered the most damage because it was not protected by the 100-inch thick casing blocks that had protected the pyramids. Now, the Sphinx was not damaged it, the weathering patterns on the Phoenix were because of what I show in the videos. It was underwater. It's not because of intense rainfall when the area was tropical in 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 BC like these other authors are trying to convince you of with zero evidence from the historical record. So this is why Lower Egypt was anciently call, called the Raised Land and why early researchers found marine fossils everywhere and salt incrustations had to be removed from inside the pyramid. The Sumerians knew of the Great Pyramids. Abraham visited the site, and in the scriptures, the Great Pyramids of Giza are also mentioned in the biblical materials under a different name. These videos go into all these details, and you can see them and a lot more evidence about the Great Pyramid in my Lost, my Lost Secrets of Giza playlist. Sir Flinders Petrie and engineer David Davidson a century ago published that the Great Pyramid surfaces its measurements, angles, its dimensions. They were constructed using unknown means, admitting that they were analyzing what basically they were admitting what they what they analyzed could not have possibly been done with the technology existing at the time. That's a hell that's a hell of a that's a hell of a, a revelation. So, James O'Conn, he coined the term technolithic, and this is precisely what this architecture is. It was machined. The blocks were quarried, transported, elevated, and set in place with adhesives 1 50th of an inch thick. They were applied, and it fused the entire structure together. Technolithic artifacts have been found all over the world demonstrating to us that highly sophisticated, highly sophisticated infrastructures have existed in the past. They, 
technology is from the ancient world. It is not the other way around. Everything is, has been reinvented or reintroduced into the population. Not only were advanced machines used to build the Great Pyramid, but the structure itself, the Great Pyramid of Giza, is a machine. Because of this technolithic precision, Sir Flinders Petrie was able to measure out all the passages and chambers to the thousandths of an inch. And his measurements are the only ones accepted by Egyptologists today and engineer David Davidson, who researched the pyramid. So, these are uh, this calendrical information that I, that I have found encoded all throughout the pyramid is, is well laid out in my presentations. You'd have to go to those playlists to see them. But the Great Pyramid's chronotexture, it shows us a very marked prominence throughout the structure indicating the year 2040 of our calendar. Thus, the structure was built during the vapor canopy world and it preserves within it a calendar that points to the exact year when the vapor canopy will return, the Phoenix year of 2040. For those unaware of the 138 year timeline of the Phoenix visitations, I'm not gonna get into those in this video. I have a playlist with over 50 videos. I also have a chart pack with 337 charts. You can educate yourselves on the Phoenix phenomenon. Uh, I, I have gone into overkill on that. I mentioned this calendar in stone because the 2040 focus of the pyramid is on its entrance, the only entrance that has ever been made known to the public. But it's not the only entrance. And this is profound. Here is a diagram of the Great Pyramid's passage and chamber system. You clearly see the entrance that was known for thousands of years before being lost and rediscovered in 820 AD by the Muslim expedition. Notice the Queen's Chamber in the passage. It has always been an anomaly. Many researchers have noted that its purpose and presence, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a sense of incompleteness. Now, if the pyramid builders so cleverly hid the ascending passage in Queen's and King's Chamber for thousands of years with disguised blocks, this necessarily implies that they could have easily, cleverly hidden another passage and entrance. And now I know this is exactly the case. I further believe that it has been discovered, it has been explored, and it's probably been sealed back kept away from public discovery, as we know. The clue is comparing the pictures of the entrance. The Great Pyramid entrance is deep set into the structure, meaning it was hidden under a casing blocks. No one ever saw these gigantic tri triangular blocks that, that form an arch. These were buried behind the blocks and then under the casing blocks themselves. But now look closely at the different pictures Older pictures are open wide and free of debris, but newer ones have a concrete mess blocking the area just below the angled monoliths. Why? What was found and then covered back over? Well, that's easy. The area just below the leaning blocks of the entry is the 24th course of masonry. And when we look inside the Great Pyramid at the 24th course, it lines up perfectly with the Queen's Chamber passage and floor. This diagram proves there is another entrance to the Great Pyramid, another tunnel that has basically been hidden from the public. Further, it is the passage for which these gigantic angled monoliths are positioned like a gate. This area is marked as 2040 AD by the structure, as I have shown numerous times and from different perspectives. So, then what we're seeing here is evidence of a structure within a structure that the pyramid itself conceals. Where have you seen these angled stones over this gate like before? Do they remind you of anything? To me, they look like the Aztec Doomsday Glyph. Seen here, which is on the stone of the fifth sun, a 22-ton relic about the four ages of destruction and the coming of the fifth sun of apocalypse. And, the, and this Aztec tradition is perfectly reflective of the ancient Bronze Age Phoenix cycles, the four ages of when the sun died each time, 552 years apart with each visitation. 
This gate is a message that this passage is to be used after the year in our calendar, 2040, when the vapor canopy has returned. Remember guys, the pyramid is vapor canopy technology and it will require this returned biosphere for us to understand what this structure's actual function is. So we have a new passage and a new entrance to take into our ever-growing study of the magnificent structure that we know embodies the concept of the return of the chief cornerstone.